Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention to the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Subaru Forester SF. A real Subaru must have four-wheel drive. If you come across front-wheel drive, then this is the acquisition of obvious freaks who want to troll people on Pokatushki. Fortunately, in the USA, the Impreza was sold in the form. Forester should be strictly all-wheel drive, and it is not so important that it is permanent full only for cars with manual transmission and for cars with automatic transmission it can be different. Contrary to popular belief that the automatic transmission relies only on a plug-in four-wheel drive, this is not the case. The TZ automatic transmission series assumes the presence of a plug-in drive and the TV automatic transmission series assumes a permanent full drive. If you figure it out, the shrink of the boxes is interchangeable, so no one bothers to put a permanent all-wheel drive on the TZ automatic transmission, such an alteration is quite popular. True, it doesn't give much gain in dynamics, but the car will crawl through mud more confidently and be less afraid of breakdowns. In general, the four-wheel drive elements are very well thought out and well executed. Of course, the CV joint and propeller shaft sometimes require maintenance, but the main attention will have to be paid to the rear gearbox. It can be turned off if the supercharged engine is fully operational, which happens not so often, haha. <laughs> But more often it simply misses the oil level due to the current oil seals or forget to change this oil, but do not forget to drift in winter. If the rear axle drive clutch wedges, then the chances of a happy life for the rest of the transmission elements are almost zero. With the mechanics in general everything is fine too. Boxes of the TU series and even with an optional lowery have established themselves as very reliable. But let's face it, with popular motors and the racers they do not live so long and happily, and the torque of more than 300 nanometers is very poorly tolerated. If the motor produced 350 to 400 nanometers, then the box turns into a consumable. However, despite the sports frame, there are not so many really powerful cars in this population. With automatic transmission, everything is a little more complicated. Despite the apparent choice in the form of automatic machines on the TZ and TV series in four different versions, there is in fact one box here. On cars until 1998, you can find its early version R4AXEL, aka TZ1A3ZSAAA. Later, they put a seriously modified box of the 4EAT series, different mainly in hydraulics and electronics. This box has a very respectable age. Subaru put it in from 1988 to 2011. Of course, the design has been worked out to the smallest detail, and this is one of the most reliable automatic machines in the world. The secret of success lies in a separate, replaceable external fine filter, spin on like a motor, in a sophisticated cooling system and carefully thought out operating modes. Electric simply doesn't allow this box to be tortured. True, Subaru with automatic transmission is very thoughtful and fuel consumption smoothly goes beyond the level of 16-18 liters per hundred in the city, but you can burn without fear for the health of the automatic transmission and there will be no difficulties on a long journey. Here, even the well body solenoids are collapsible, and in case of contamination, they can simply be cleaned. Of course, we have enough unique ones who have finished off such a reliable automatic transmission. Most often, we are talking about the wear of the blocking linings of the gas turbine engine to the adhesive layer with contamination of all filters that someone didn't want to change in time. Further, a drop in pressure begins due to contamination of the well body and serious mechanical problems. The rear hub bearings and low clutch drum are also potential replacement for racers. With proper operation with runs of 250 350 thousand, the blocking pad for the gas turbine engine will need to be replaced. While it is worth changing the rubber seals of the box, pistons and the line pressure solenoid assembly. After this procedure, the box will pass the same amount. Of course, they all must be changed at least once every 40 50,000 km, and the automatic transmission keeps the engine torque even better than the mechanics. Anyway, 450 nanometers is not too much of a problem for it. Unless you additionally have to take care of cooling and change the oil more often along with the linings of the gas turbine engine. It is believed that the opposed with a low center of gravity is the top of the design idea and a very reliable unit. Not at all. A strange design in which sometimes there are four camshafts for four cylinders, it is striking in size, complexity of repair, specific layout and low resource. In addition, the quality of the cooling system components is below any criticism. Radiators flow on the seams, pipes require mandatory replacement at the age of 10, fans simply die by that age. And everything is not so cheap, which is why these parts are often changed for very conditionally suitable elements from shutdowns. The exhaust system is also not happy. The exhaust rots just like on Jiggly, and if the car is more than 10-12 years old, 
the most likely the entire system has already been replaced a couple of times or thoroughly welded. To top it off, the EJ20 engines in different versions could have very different control systems and attachments, and given the style of service, frequent replacement of units and other Subaru nuances, this can become a serious headache for the owner. It is not uncommon for another Forester owner to ask experienced pros, tell me what kind of motor I have. The main engine options are the AG202 and AG220J, with two camshafts and natural aspire. The EJ205 is a turbocharged 4 camshaft and has several power options. And finally, the EJ251 with the two camshafts and natural aspired, but with a volume of 2.5 liters. Much less common are serial cars with 4 shaft 2.5 liter engines of the EJ25D series, which were produced for only a year and a half. There are still heels of other exotic options, but it is almost unrealistic to meet them. Of course, all engines are boxer. The timing belt is driven by a belt and ejection is electronic. The supercharged version with a small MHI TF of 35 turbine, while the more powerful versions already have a compatible MHI TD04 or even TD05. To replace the spark plugs, the motor doesn't need to be removed. These are bikes. True, the operation is not as simple as on a normal car. You have to remove the intake, air filter, washer, reservoir and battery. And only then, with the help of the great and mighty Ratchet, Candle Wretch and Carden for a singular overhead cam motor, the candles can be replaced. There are no hatches in the wings, the spars still interfere. Forrester is not your legacy. Natural aspired engines 2.0 SOHC can be called the most resourceful. In any case, the problem of knocking the four cylinder only happens on them with runs of 150 to 150,000 km, and the engine can pass all 300 400,000 before being repaired. The notorious knock is a characteristic sound when working on the cold one, which, having appeared, gradually progresses and begins to manifest itself in a warm state. The story of the knocking engine ends usually with a drop in compression in the four cylinder or burnout of the piston. An autopsy most often shows almost a hole in hot hon, but at the same time a solid ellipse in the sleeve. It is better to replace the old pump with the so-called 11 mm after a run of 100-150 thousand kilometers. The thickness of the gears of the standard pump is 10 mm and the thickness of the STI pump is 12 mm, so at a minimum polishing and replacement of the cover and gears with the minimum clearances will be required. In addition to the appearance of ellipticity in the fourth cylinder due to miscalculation in the liner design and overheating, the owners risk getting the liners to rotate due to the missed oil level and high load on the liners. Subaru engines have a complicated relationship with oil. They do not like low viscosity oils and SAE40 or even SAE50 is considered the optimal value for running motors. Secondly, the oil level is critical for them. The volume of the crankcase is small, and if there is not enough oil, then it is easy to grab oil starvation and cracking the liners when cornery. But if you pour more than a liter and a half, then the engine can unexpectedly give out a solid fluff of smoke in the turn, and along the way, ruin the catalyst and get a portion of carbon deposits on the rings. And the motor also likes to squeeze out the oil seals when overflowing, and oil baths are also not useful for pistons. And yet, when driving on asphalt ring roads, it is better to take a chance and pour too much than get up with the liner turned. Another weak point of boxer motors is the long timing belt with a complex tensioning system. Any damage to the rollers or failure of the tensioner will lead to phase drift. On SOHC motors, there is limited about the crankshaft gear. There is a limiter about the crankshaft gear, which prevents the belt from jumping over and breaking off its loosens. If it loosens, it is better to take it off, then the weakened belt has a chance not to break. True, the risk of the remnants of the drive belt getting under the timing belt increases. The OHC motors need, need a limiter. They do not tolerate phase jump well. You can even bend the valves and not on the piston, but simply on another valve. By the way, in case of an accident, the timing mechanism is damaged easily and naturally. You do not even need a strong blow. It is enough to fly into the fence or one unsuccessful cut picket will knock out the motor tightly. In addition to these difficulties, there are also regular leaks of gaskets, and due to the peculiarities of the layout of motor, the engine will have to be removed to eliminate them. And an attempt to get off with work on site is fraught with the ingress of large portions of dirt into the motor. The leaks mask the engine's oil appetite, which can progress very quickly. It is enough to warm up the engine once with an unsuccessful oil. And how the motor is disassembled and capitalized cannot be told here. 
you will have to put an 18 plus page or close access to children. Believe me, the process is very intimate and confusing. Engines with a volume of 2.5 liters are noticeably more sensitive to the correct operation of the cooling system, and the EJ25D motor was generally discontinued due to overheating of the four cylinder for no particular reason. True, they learned to solve the problem by installing an improved pump and an organizer of flows in the block, but if the master has a chance to make a mistake, he will make it. If the motor also has a turbine, and even more so it is a motor with a DOHC head, then be strong and do not be discouraged. No can be expected after 70,000 run, so overhauls will be a frequent occurrence. Usually such motors do not run without repair for more than 100-130,000 km. The load on the liners is higher, so the chances of lifting the crankshaft are also much higher. The control system is characterized by capriciousness and a variety of options. Detonation is a common occurrence in AG205 engines. A higher heat load threatens the integrity of not only radiators and pipes, but also the cylinder head gasket. There were cases when a piece of gasket was blown out due to local overheating under load and the leak opened. But there is no need to be afraid of the turbines. All regular ones are very inexpensive and they serve for a long time, but the supercharging control system on Subaru is strikingly flawed. There is no normal regulation, everything is at the level of 80s. One valve, not too reliable, Pureburg 7006.03.0 and the need for preload adjustment. The bypass is usually connected incorrectly and operates roughly. The work of the ECU is not distinguished by its elegance either. And do not forget that there are versions of the motor with a conventional mechanical choke. As a result, there is frequent detonation and great chances to disable the engine even before the small resource that it should have. Enough about the magic opposite. Nothing good can be said about it. Nobody except for Porsche uses these engines in large quantities for a reason. All this information on the problems of Subaru Forester SF is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.